Hi everybody, for today's video I wanted to share my bucket list with you. That is all classic cars that I would like to buy, let's say within the next 10 years or something like that. I assume a budget of let's say 300,000 euro for all 10 cars in total. I mean I'm not a millionaire. But anyway, I think it's more interesting to choose from these weird, odd, cheaper, more relatively unknown cars because finally at a car show usually they get more attention than the obvious investors, collectors, darlings like let's say a 911 Porsche or a 280 convertible which uh, cost 300,000 nearly each. After I put the list together, I realized that 7 out of 10 cars are from the 70s, but probably that's usual because car guys always fancy the cars from their childhood. So 7 out of 10 are from the 70s, the rest is older and let's start with the 70s now. The first car on my bucket list is the Bitter CD. It's probably quite unknown outside Germany, but for me it's one of the most beautiful sports cars ever produced. Bitter was a German company founded by Erich Bitter, a former racing driver. And the Bitter CD was based on the Opel Diplomat with GM's 5.4 liter V8 engine and 230 horsepower. The idea was to produce a sports car that is as exclusive and as stylish as an Italian sports car like for example the Maserati Ghibli but also as reliable and as cheap to maintain like an Opel. Finally only 395 units left the factory between 1973 and 1979 and today values are still reasonable compared to Ferraris and Maseratis. The price range for a CD is about 35 to 55,000 euros. And uh, there is a reason that um, I put it number one on my bucket list. It's maybe the car that started my passion for classic cars when I was a little boy of just six years old. In my small Bavarian village there was one guy driving a blue bitter CD and any time I saw this car, I was absolutely fascinated about the sleek lines and this deep, lusty sound of the exhaust. So with just an age of six, I put this car already on my bucket list and it is still there today. Second on my list is the Aston Martin Lagonda, a 70s spaceship designed by the English designer William Towns. This car had a very long production run from 1974 up to 1990 and in this time just 645 units were produced. The design was a very extreme interpretation of the wedge shape folded paper style which could be seen on 70s sports cars like the Lotus Esprit. The Lagonda was powered by a 5.3 liter V8 engine with 284 horsepower and it not only had this insane wedge shape styling but also featured digital instruments and touchscreen buttons on the dash which were far ahead of its time but also infamous to frequent fails. Maybe that's the reason that they are still relatively cheap today, about 35 to 55,000 euros. 
Anyway, I have always loved this car since I first saw it on the Austrian Autobahn with just the age of maybe seven. We were heading back home from a ski trip in our Opel Commodore when my dad suddenly had to pull down from the left lane because some exotic double pop-up headlights in his back flashed up and forced him on the right lane. It was an Aston Martin Lagonda with British number plates and little Mike was instantly infected with this Aston Martin Lagonda virus. So this car came second on the bucket list. There are surely better James Bond cars like the Aston Martin DB5 or the Lotus Esprit and this 1974 AMC Matador Coupe is not even a James Bond car but the car of the villain Francisco Scaramanga. George. But I have a special connection to this character and the movie because The Man with the Golden Gun was filmed in Panga Bay which is at the doorstep of my second home in Phuket, Thailand. So, as the biggest James Bond fan and as a resident of Phuket, I would love to own one of these strange AMC Matador Coupes. Nearly 100,000 Matador Coupes were produced between 1974, the year of the movie, and 1978. Engine options included everything between a 3.8 liter straight 6 and a 6.6 .6 liter V8. I love its fastback design with the double tail lights and I was not the only one who liked it. The AMC Matador Coupe was awarded Best Styled Car of 1974 by the editors of Car and Driver magazine. But nowadays the interest in this car is limited and values are between only 11 to 17,000 euros. That's really small money, I think, for a very unique car. Now that's my kind of car. Mario. That's one I want. Forget it. That's one of a kind, unique. I never saw anything like it. There's your answer. <laughs> I have a little request. Is it possible to get a... A Monteverdi. Monteverdi, Monteverdi. I've been lucky to spot one once in my life. Yeah. And it's my wife, gentlemen. The truth is, I want to buy it for her. It'll be our 30th this year. We can't disappoint your wife. Mm. Hello, Mario. You picked up a Monteverdi tonight, didn't you? How did you know? I'll tell you later. Bring it right back and park it exactly where it was. But we need a Monteverdi for Thibault. We don't need that one. Bring it right back. The Monteverdi belongs to the girl I saw at the opera. We're at the restaurant where it was parked. Bring it back, okay? Can any one of you still remember the movie Car Napping? Or has anyone younger than 30 or outside Germany ever seen it at all? Please let me know in the comments below. I would be really curious about it because I loved this movie when I had first seen it in German television in the mid 80s. It's about gentlemen car thieves and full of cool 70s cars. Among them, a Monteverdi Sierra. In this movie, it was the first time for me to come across this Swiss car brand. And I have to admit, I fell in love with the sound of that name. Peter Monteverdi produced exotic luxury cars in Switzerland between 1967 and 1984. All of them with big Chrysler V8 engines and breathtaking Italian design. The later Sierra, the car from the movie, doesn't have the perfect lines and the big power of the earlier Monteverdi's, 
but it has still this great name. It is super rare and best of all, it is somehow still affordable with values between 35 and 45,000 euros. The Sierra was based on Chrysler's F platform, that was the Dodge Aspen in the US, and it had a 5.2 or 5.9 liter V8 with modest 168 to 180 horsepower. Its design was developed by Peter Monteverdi himself in a cooperation with Carrozzeria Fisore in Italy. And um, it's not really clear how many Sierras were produced between 1977 and 82, but it's supposed to be less than 50. So this must be the best value to rarity ratio in the whole classic car market today. Hello. Hello. The fifth car on my bucket list is the one that I would like to buy next season. It's the Lancia Gamma Berlina, a fastback executive saloon designed by Leonardo Fioravanti of Pininfarina. And I love the clean and modern lines and its extreme rarity today. Outside Italy, the survival rate is close to zero, which is due to rust issues, but also a major engineering fault which can cause serious engine damages. The power steering was driven from the cam belt and that belt could snap when the steering was on full lock. That's why Jeremy Clarkson concluded on Top Gear that the gamma exploded every time you turned the steering wheel. But it's probably not that bad. And it's beautiful and it's rare and I want to have one end of discussion. So just in case that you own one with air condition, please, then please contact me because I would be seriously interested. Number six on my list is now a car that surely everyone knows, the Mercedes 280 TE estate or station wagon from the 70s. For me, this car is also connected to a movie or better say a TV series, Heart to Heart, which was my second favorite after Magnum when I was 10 years old. And Jonathan and Jennifer had a beige three liter diesel station wagon beside their yellow Benz SL in the garage. And I always liked this car a lot in the movie. Just for the records, yes, the 308 GTS from Magnum would be on my list but uh, Ferrari values definitely had exploded, so I can't forget it. Back to the 280 TE. For me, it's the most beautiful station wagon of all time. It has bulletproof quality, which lasts forever if well maintained. And the 2.8 liter engine with 185 horsepower is the most powerful and best suited for this car, which was produced between 1978 and 1985. And Values are now between 10 and 18,000 euros in Germany. But my problem is I would like to have this car as my daily driver in Thailand. And here, other than in Germany, it's really difficult to find one. Otherwise, I would already have it in my garage here and preferably also in a color like yellow or orange with olive inside. I really like this kind of uh, strange 70s color combinations. That's really great. Number seven is an American design icon of the 70s, the Lincoln Continental Mark V, built between 1977 and 1979. It was Ford's flagship model and featured very cool sharp edged fender lines and a massive size of 5.85 meters or 230 inch. I love its trademark hidden headlights, the giant grille, the oval opera windows and the spare tire inspired boot. Engine options were a 6.6 liter V8 and a 7.5 liter V8, both with a three speed automatic gearbox. And the smaller engine had 166 horsepower, the bigger one 208. If you wanted to go really fat, Lincoln offered special designer series editions by Bill Blass, Cartier, Givenchy and Emilio Pucci. With 
228,000 units produced, the Mark V was one of the best-selling Lincolns and it should be easy to find a good one in the US. Values are around 11 to 17,000 euros and that's not really much money for a super cool, super big American icon. With car number eight, we will finally leave the 70s and go back one decade to 1961, when French car maker Simca presented the 1000, a small rear-engined four-door saloon which had its origins at Fiat in Italy. Fiat was at this time the major shareholder of Simca. The Simca 1000 was a modern car for its time. It had a one liter four cylinder water cooled engine with originally just 36 horsepower, but later evolution models called the rally models boosted up to 103 horsepower and were quite successful in motorsport. The economic success of the Simca 1000 was so big that it stayed in production for 17 years until 1978 and it sold in an incredible number of almost 2 million units. Though not many survived, mainly due to rust as usual, and um, values today are between 4 and 6 thousand euros. Why do I have this car on my list? It's a personal story again. My grandfather had a moss green Simca 1000 with tan interior and I remember very well sitting in his car in the garage on the driver's seat and play driving the car with maybe six years of age. Again, one decade earlier is car number 9, the Ford Comet. Most people outside France probably won't know this car and if someone even with knowledge about classic cars sees it, it could be taken for a Talbot Lago Grand Sport or a Dulaé 235 maybe. Ford France built the Comet between 1951 and 1954 in very small numbers. Originally equipped with a small 2.2 liter V8, it later got a big 3.9 liter V8 with modest 105 horsepower but plenty of torque. This model was named Comet Monte Carlo and this is the one that I would like to have. With a value of 40 to 55,000 euro, this is the cheapest way to drive an exclusive French 50s sports car that looks like hundred thousands of euros and it is a ticket to high-end classic car events. And one more curious aspect, in 1954 Ford France was sold to Simca and the Comet was branded Simca Comet Monte Carlo for its last production year in 1955. Finally we have reached car number 10 and we go another two decades back to pre-war classics. Generally, I like to see these old vintage pre-war cars at classic car shows, but I would not be tempted to buy one, except this one. A Cord 810 sedan, the baby Duesenberg as Jay Leno calls it. This car was so incredibly modern at its time between 1936 and 37, really like nothing else you could buy in the 30s. It had front wheel drive and independent front suspension and it was the first car with hidden headlights. Power came from a 4.7 liter V8 engine with 124 horsepower and if that was not enough there was also a supercharged version with 170 horsepower. 
Corp sold about 3,000 units of the 810 and 812 range within two model years, 1936 and 1937. Values of standard sedans are not so high, about 40 to 65,000 euros. Convertibles, of course, are much more expensive, but for me, the closed sedan has the more attractive styling. So that's the one I would like to have. This was my bucket list of affordable cars that I would like to buy. I mean, it's surely not an investment guide because I think most of these cars are not really destined to appreciate a lot in the near future. Some of them are such niche models unknown to the bigger public that nearly nobody has them on the radar or they are considered unreliable, or ugly or just not collectible. But for me, that doesn't matter. I think it's not necessary to spend the big money to have fun with classic cars. So my advice would be just look beyond the usual stuff that everyone wants to have and wants to collect. Buy something, have fun with it and don't care what others think about it. Please let me know in the comments below what you think about the cars that I have chosen and maybe tell me what you would choose for the budget that I assume. And as usual, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and I would very much appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel. See you next time.